analysis is that you have all the core elements and support services physically located in one building. There was an interesting analogy that uh, some of my colleagues and I were talking about this morning. And we were just down in uh, Silicon Valley talking about the role of Mars in the clean tech ecosystem. And someone put it very interesting. How do you describe Mars? Asking some of our American counterparts who were, weren't overly familiar with what we did. But after you describe it, they walk away saying, you know what it is? Mars is Silicon Valley in a building. I thought that was kind of a unique way of citing that. Now, fully appreciating my earlier comments around we need a made in Canada solution to support innovation and entrepreneurship. But the beauty of the place is that you as an aspiring or, or again, existing entrepreneur, how great is it to have a physical clubhouse where all the different needs and support services that you could possibly want are physically in one locale? And that environment is critically important as part of the thesis of Mars, whereby we have an incubator uh, on our uh, second and third floor where early stage companies can have an office providing desks and support services. We have a conference center such as like, uh, like this. And there are many people in our food court that are here today for the off chance they might have a chance to bump into you because you might have something in common related to innovation, commercialization, and entrepreneurship. Again, going back to that kind of clubhouse feel. We have research facilities here. We have venture capital tenants. We have large corporate tenants. Again, all aligned to the necessary path that as you're growing your company, you're going to have different needs through your progress. And if, as those needs evolve, sector agnostic, again, life sciences, clean tech, whatever it might be, how great is it to potentially come into one physical facility where you might be able to satisfy most, if not all, of those demands? But uh, very excitedly, with this expansion, we will become one of the world's largest urban innovation centers in the world. This place matters. The strategic tendency of who's going to be in this building, from entrepreneurs to private sector companies to government organizations to venture capital firms, again, are all thematically aligned to the innovation entrepreneurial ecosystem. So Mars Innovation, as it differs from Mars, Mars Innovation is a member-based institution up on our fourth floor in this tower. The members are the leading research and academic institutions, 16 of them primarily in the GTA. So think of U of T as one, York, Ryerson, OCAD, SickKids, Mount Sinai, Baycrest, etc., St. Mike's, all the leading research institutions, not only in Toronto, but representative of Canada. A huge amount of research dollars, public sector research dollars, goes into these institutions each year. Phenomenal discoveries, phenomenal research. But one of the core challenges that we have as a country, a paramount challenge that we have as a country, is the commercial outcomes from this phenomenal research is relatively small, borderline negligible at this point. And from a global competitive perspective, we as a country, if we don't fix this, all the research investment, the billions of dollars of research that goes into our academic or research institutions every year, it's going to be very problematic. So the mandate of these institutions, yes, one, first of all, diversification of revenue. Government funds, as many of you have seen in the latest uh, both provincial and federal budget reports, it's getting problematic. And CEOs of these hospitals are becoming more and more aware of that. So an increased and enhanced focus is absolutely paramount to figure out ways, more creative models to take the research and translate those into better commercial outcomes. And the existing infrastructure in these institutions are serving a purpose, but they're not generating the commercial outcomes that they should. But if we can't get access to, provide the services rather to give entrepreneurs access to mentorship and advice, talent, money, capital, connections to customers or partners, that we're not doing our job. And again, when entrepreneurial endeavors come in, they might say, hey, I just need to raise a bit of capital, or I need a VP of sales, or I just need access to someone to give you some coaching and insight. Hey, I'm trying to call these customers to do a beta test, but they're not answering my call, or I'm looking for a channel partner to help distribute my product and it bolts onto their product, but again, they're not returning my call. What do many entrepreneurial endeavors do? Well, as you could expect, having been down this path myself many a times, you get very frustrated. So that is the role that Mars plays, the provision of services to address these needs, to expedite the growth of these early stage companies, to ultimately create a lot of jobs and a lot of wealth for the Canadian economy. So again, those who are thinking about starting a business, on the, uh, on the Mars portal are educational resources. You know, we've uh, you know, spent a fair bit of time and an inordinate amount of resources 
to build what is fast becoming and quite proudly becoming one of the world's preeminent collections of real-time online entrepreneurship education. Videos, podcasts, articles, workbooks, all designed based on feedback that we've heard from our clients citing, hey, I don't want to necessarily sit down exclusively with an entrepreneur. I'd like to watch a video at 2 in the morning to understand what is a go-to-market strategy in the life sciences and healthcare industry. If that's what our entrepreneurs are asking for, we will go out and build that content. That bolts on to a whole suite of educational programs that we offer in-house. For those that are not aware, we run a program called Entrepreneurship 101. It's our flagship program. It's, for, it's a 30-week, one-hour-a-week program. There's a certificate at the conclusion of that. But fundamentally, the target audience for that program is would-be entrepreneurs. I'm thinking about doing it. I'm not too sure what are the fundamentals. What should I be thinking about? We have 400 people attend that course every week. That is a cultural element to inspire and encourage entrepreneurs, many of which are new immigrants to the country, looking for opportunities, understanding what are the resources as a new immigrant that I need to understand and be aware of to help me and enhance the probability of achieving milestones when I start my business. So very excitedly, I was happy to, uh, to see a handful of people discussing this in the, uh, in the atrium before coming onto the podium, but we have launched the Mars Clean Tech Fund. Uh, we've closed an initial round of 10 million on a broader 30 million, which is essentially a venture capital fund enabling us to play in the early stage seed capital to make investments in high quality deal flow that we want to see ultimately create again a lot of jobs and a lot of wealth. We also administer the Investment Accelerator Fund, which is a provincial pool of capital. And we have a handful of other endeavors in the way to really address the capital challenge that many entrepreneurs face. And if you're not familiar with the landscape and you're a relatively new immigrant to the Canadian, understanding the nuances of how you approach that to sell to a bank versus a life sciences company versus a large conglomerate is fundamentally very different in the Canadian market than it is in many others. That is our role. We ensure that we maintain those connections, leverage our neutrality, and before we make any introductions of an entrepreneurial company in our portfolio, we spend an inordinate amount of time making sure that that entrepreneurial endeavor has the, I'll call it the Mars stamp of approval, whereby we endorse this company. We think it's worth 20 minutes of this corporate potential customer's time and investor's time. That is our job. And that brand is continuing to build in the, in the, uh, in the global community. So what is the unique role of Mars in this? Well, at the onset, I talked about the generalities. But to dig it down to a level with a bit more detail and more applied to clean tech, we have a whole suite of advisors that know this space, connections to international markets. We have an array of corporate partners, Emerson, Viola, GE, who have a vested interest to be close to Mars because they have innovation strategies, they have growth strategies, they have revenue strategies, they have portfolio of IP strategies. When they come to Mars and they want to have that connection, they're asking the questions as, as related to, here's a bit of our innovation strategy. Do you have anything in your portfolio of early stage companies that we need to be aware of, to partner with, to, to acquire, to invest in? A whole series of desired outcomes. And many of our entrepreneurial endeavors view this as a core asset of the Mars ecosystem. For those that are relatively new to Canada, you know there's an, an, uh, an air of politeness and conservatism that many of us have. Having spent most of my working career in the U.S., coming back to Canada actually to take this role, I forgot just how polite and how conservative that we can be, especially in the business world. Well, that's great, and let's continue to do that and be proud. But one of the things that we absolutely need to do is enhance our culture of entrepreneurship, innovation, risk-taking. One of the fastest growing subsets of our portfolio over the last year have been first or second generation immigrants. The risks, the opportunities that many took to come here, that inherent, I'm going to start a business, I'm going to do these things because of where I came from and why I'm doing it, please spread that. It is absolutely imperative and it's motivating and inspiring. Many of our entrepreneurs will have a discussion with a, a would-be immigrant who understands their story where they came from, what they accomplished, actually motivates and inspires those. It's actually quite exciting. But as a broader mandate as an organization, we need to celebrate the success. You know, those who take significant risks to come here and attempt these businesses, even if it fails, it should be worn, you know, not as a badge of disappointment, but as a badge of opportunity that I tried it, it didn't work, but I'm going to figure out a way to get back on the horse and come back. And we see many of our entrepreneurial endeavors that that's happened to. Our job is to give candid feedback and advice and support. But if we think it's a bad idea, and sometimes we're wrong, 
But if we think that the business opportunity isn't going to go anywhere, we'll tell you that and we'll say, yes, but here are some things that you need to think about, but please keep the motivation and inspiration. We don't want to lose that. Many entrepreneurial innovation support organizations, however you want to define it, one of the core mistakes that they make is they forget about the cultural motivation and inspirational element. If I'm an early stage entrepreneur and I come out and someone says, hey, bad idea, I don't have time for you, I got to go, I probably will, well, one of two things obviously can happen, but there's a higher probability of me saying, forget it, I'm just going to get a job on Bay Street, versus someone who takes that meeting and it's concluded by saying, not a great idea, but you know what, here's your homework, here's three or four things to think about, let's get you some education, Let's provide you with some market research. Go away and learn, but keep the motivation and inspiration. Many of our early stage entrepreneurial endeavors that come to Mars have a need for talent. And talent has no boundaries, and we know that. I'm preaching to the choir for the audience that is here. And, and if I go back to the uh, you know, example of Morgan Solar, quality company, quality opportunity, big market, small amount of investment capital at the time, and we proactively went out and did a global search with this client and a couple other partners to find the right talent. Didn't care where this individual came from. And Asif Ansari is a press release, you can Google it, you know, came from a very prominent role, didn't need a job, he's tried and true. But recognizing that there's no boundaries to talent, we had a quality opportunity to bring them here. We continue to do that. You know, many of the early stage investors, if you're making an investment into a company, you want the right person for the right job. If that means going abroad and finding someone and luring them here by quality of opportunity, then hey, that's great. Absolutely paramount. And what's even more exciting is someone like Nassif Ansari, as he goes through this process, my hunch is that he'll become an ambassador, citing, here's why it worked for me. And again, it goes back to the culture element that I had on the um, uh, previous slides, sorry, wrong way here. But it goes back to that culture element where we need these ambassadors to promote to the global community that there is something magical and exciting happening in this ecosystem. There are great opportunities, there is great research, there are great you know, uh, entrepreneurial endeavors. You need to be here. And our job is to help support and get those companies connected and find that talent and bring them into this jurisdiction.